not quiet. Hello, folks. Oh, geez. How are you? Uh, our debrief live here from the Airbnb in Newcastle, Indiana. Rob Howard and David Cole. Uh, we are two tired dudes right now. I'm telling you this right now. It's uh, We were announcing, at least I was announcing Dave was covering up uh, above the scale house. There's no air conditioning and the windows don't open. So <laughs> it was about 100 degrees, maybe 95 and steamy. No. 100, do you think? It had to get triple digits. It was so hot up in there. Because it was 80 degrees in the car when I left. Okay. And that was, what, an hour ago? Yeah, it was hot. So I'm tired. We're both super tired. Uh, but, uh, again, we thought, thought we'd jump on again here. Um, Dave's got the rum and coke. I'm actually going for a glass of vino tonight. I'm changing it up a little bit. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the coverage throughout the day. Uh, comments are open. Make sure you drop something. I'm rocking my... Racing for Vets shirt today. Love the the boys. Dave's doing the card, pure carding. Um, but yeah, where do you go to get one of these? Uh, ecardingnews.com slash store. Heidi Welk, I believe, will be at the track. She'll take care of you. She'll be at the track, the Summer Nationals in Newcastle next weekend. So if you're looking to get stuff, we got more hashtag support carding uh, shirts available as well. But hey, hello, folks. Uh, this is uh, our third, I guess our fourth. We did, is our fourth one or the third one? Well, we kind of did one Thursday night. Just to kind yeah, of it was a short one. Yeah, it was a short one. So we're going to do it at the track. That's right. Not that's here right. because that's right. it wasn't as hot. <laughs> it wasn't as hot. Thursday <laughs> as it was today. It was so hot today up there. My God, I was dying. I think I drank 18 bottles of water throughout the day. It was crazy. Uh, anyway, let's, let's jump into this because uh, obviously uh, some pretty good racing today. We were wondering whether or not we were going to have any guys sweep and have uh, three wins. Only one driver able to do that, Nathan Stewart. Hat trick. Scoring the hat trick, as David would say. Uh what do you want? You want to just jump right in here or what do you want to do? Questions, guys. If you have any questions, fire them up here. Post them. Let's go, DC. Get started. Where are we going to start with? Let's start with uh, right in front of you. Let's start with the KA uh, X, X30 Master and K100 Master, only because it's on top of the, the sheets. It is on the top. Um, all, all in all, the uh, we were expecting another battle. Potentially Scott Roberts getting uh, three wins. He won the first two races. Um, Adam Pettit actually able to take over an early lead. Then uh, a little trouble for Scott Roberts coming through turn number seven and eight. Pound of the curb, I think it's seven through the chain off the machine. He goes off the racetrack. It ends up being a solo cart USA one two. Pettit was really strong though, super quick. Uh, he was able to get away to the win. Um, South Sparacio finishing in second spot, so a solo cart one two, and then uh, John Crow uh, finishing in the third position. Uh, the Carapaletti brothers were lucky to go home after the first couple of days and told me that they just really weren't making the progress they wanted. Figured they'd go home, press the reset button, regroup. And hopefully come back next weekend. I think we're going to see a couple more drivers on here, and a couple local drivers are going to come out to play as well in the X30 Master Plus. Yeah, again, we talked about it uh, with the uh, the Master category. Maybe the three rounds on the weekend wasn't the the uh, the favorite selection for them. Um, <laughs> you know, it's a lot. It, it, that that was kind of the one thing we were going into today was attrition. You know, how much attrition would we see? Um, we saw it, especially in the shifter categories with a, a lot of attrition yeah, there. That's true. Um, but uh, we did in, in this category with, uh, you know, Roberts losing the chain. And then in the K100 master category, Nick Tucker leading the way until yeah. a flat tire took him out of uh, out of the race. So, um, again, Nick Tucker had the opportunity to, I think, also go for the hat trick. He won the first go two races. Hat, yep. hat trick. Yep. So, uh so both drivers ended up, um, you know, missing the net. Yeah. And uh, why? shanking it to the right or left yeah. or top or <laughs> whatever. Or going in the net above. Into the grandstands. Uh, um, so, yeah. yeah. Both drivers. So it ended up being a battle between um, Jonathan Silva and Ron Jenkins at the end of that one. And Jenkins had the, the, the lap in the last corner, or the last lap rather, turn 15. Silva goes to the inside and the hairpin turn 15 kind of keeps keeps going deeper into the zone to try to make sure he had it and stop the over under. Ron came down to try to try maybe the over under, at least get around the corner. Contact, Jenkins goes off. Um, actually, I think Silva almost spun as well, but he was able to continue. So Jonathan Silva ends up getting the race win. Yeah, it didn't quite go off the racetrack, but obviously slowed the pace a lot. If there would have been another driver uh, lurking behind, he would have went from third to first right away. But uh, uh, Silver was Silva was able to escape with victory and uh, and uh, break up the sweep. That's it for uh, for Tucker. Shout out to a couple of guys here. Uh, Jim Conlon saying he had some buffering problems on his end. Maybe sound like Max Headroom. That's kind of funny. Uh, um, and Gary Cullen, my good buddy up in Canada, says good evening, guys. Uh, How many people actually remember Max Headroom? 
That's you're right. That's a long time. I was a child. <laughs> I was not. You were probably <laughs> high school. We were in high school. Yeah, yeah. That was funny actually. Uh, all right, let's go to the X30 Junior category. Um, all in all, this particular cat class, I think uh, David was super fun to watch throughout the throughout the weekend. Uh, a number we had three different winners, right? I think we ended up with three different winners. Three different winners. Yeah, Paul Bacuse won. Um, yes, did Brent Cruz win the first one? No, uh, I believe it was John Burke. That's right. So let me double check. You can that. look that, that. But uh, yeah, so Burke, potentially Burke, then Bocuse won yesterday. Jace Park today. Uh, one of the interesting things I thought about the main event was the fact that Jace got out early. And uh, we haven't really seen this a lot, especially this particular category. Um, Cruz. Cruz. There you go. So Cruz won the first one. Bocuse yesterday. Well, Park won. Park won. Oh, that's right. Park had won. the win taken away because of the the – Blocking, blocking penalty. Blocking penalty. Yeah. Even though he so. did the block, and wasn't actually done. The guy driver, the driver actually got by. Regardless, Park able to get out front. Uh, you guys probably listened to it on the, on the show. Uh, Park actually kept pulling away, and they started racing behind him really aggressively. They were doing two wide, three wide. Uh, Mateo Rubio, Rubio Luengo was in the fight. Uh, essentially, Park just put down the laps and was able to continue to pull away. Didn't turn the fast lap of the race, but continued to pull away. Well, we were told. Again, tire management was big Ooh, that was in big. this category big. because they were running the harder Evinco tires. So only two sets of tires for the three races. For the three races. Yeah. And they essentially rolled up on the grid, the only driver to roll up on grid with new tires for the main event. They had fresh tires. He, he ran fresh, used that's tires. That's what I was told. Wow. So he had fresh tires. So I, I'm assuming those early couple of laps, it really helped uh, with the, uh, the grip level. Damn. And uh, – but as you said, we saw a couple drivers kind of squeak away a little bit um, throughout the weekend, but not as big as Park did. But yeah. behind them, they would not settle down and work together. <laughs> no. So that that was really the major issue because, as you said, he wasn't the quickest card on the racetrack, but he was probably the, probably the most consistent. That's it, and didn't have to fight anybody yeah, once it. he yeah. got up front. Yeah, and they, like you said, they, David said they kept racing hardcore side by side. Uh, side by side to the ski jump corner, side by side into they kept past each other in the cell tower corner as well. Uh, Mateo Rubio Luengo ends up finishing in the second spot. Paul Bocuse in third. So good re recovery, for, not recovery, back up for Bocuse after the win. And Bocuse actually spun at the line. That, if you that, recall, right, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I told, I, you know, obviously from our vantage point where we were, we couldn't really see like we could see in the Champions Club yeah. where we typically are. This weekend we weren't because obviously we're showered up and we've been sweating all day long today um and so i believe it was three wide and guys were just all just kind of jostling for position and somehow as soon as they got to the line he got he got spun around and then almost ran into ken johnson <laughs> or oh, did he really it, i i think ken just kind of stood up and saw him come and stop right in front of him. wow so, okay. yeah uh thomas and Anunziata finished in the fourth spot uh, the team ferris racing crew Really good all weekend long. They really had things dialed in. Uh, Alex Stanfield was fast all weekend long. Really didn't get what he I think he deserved in terms of pace. He ends up P5. Tulio was fast. Brent Cruz had the fast lap of the race. He ended up in seventh. Um, there's a number of drivers that, that were further back. On the results, I can't see where he – I want to say Mossman started almost dead last. Frankie Mossman moving his way up to the 10th position, I think. I'll grab that, David, because I, I just want to give Frankie a little shout-out there because I think he was one of the big movers working his way forward. Started 30th, got up to 10th. There you go. Essentially dead last, all the way up to 10th position. So Frankie Moss been doing a great job working his way forward there. All in all, the junior category, very interesting. Like we said, we had a couple of potential in the Masters class. Uh, both um, Nick Tucker and Scott Roberts with a chance to win all three. They didn't, but three – we had a couple of categories with three different winners. We'll get to that in the shifter class, too, but three different winners in X30 Junior. So uh, mm -hmm. totally wide open. We go into the, uh, the race next weekend. Everybody's already asking about points. We don't have anything calculated. It's not our job. Uh, it's not our job, <laughs> but we will try to do it as we go through um, the next three rounds. We'll see if we're able to keep up with, uh, because again, we're talking about 12 different categories, uh, a lot to do. Um, we'll see if we can keep up. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I'll drop, uh, yeah, David always, up, you know, as you guys know, if you if you follow the Pro Tour and the, in the main event deals, the last year, I think the best one last year was the K100 Senior. We were David, just talking about that last we, night in the paddock. David yeah. was going back and forth with uh, all the different permutations. It He's running every lap. Pursing, changing, right? It was Persing, Nick Persing, yep. Ramirez, Ramirez, and 
Os- Osborne. Yeah. And but and Dave was of course he's got the spreadsheet, so he's changing where they are on the track and every lap, and we're seeing where they are. And if this guy makes the move here, if he's able to get one more spot, he's going to win the championship. Um, yeah, it was exciting. And again, again, David will try to do fast it. Fast lap because again, oh, the fast lap of the race, fast lap of the race, ten points, ten points, ten points. With the way that that whole category went was uh, was crazy. Uh, shout out to the boys from Full Gas Motorsports. I assume they're probably at uh, they, they get B Dubs. No, they got they, they got fifteen minutes before they get kicked out at B Dubs. <laughs> so uh, I'm sure that uh, I'm sure they're having a couple of cocktails there for sure. Some wings and beers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who is who? Who's this Nathan Stewart guy? I don't know. Nathan Stewart. No idea. Uh, all right. We'll get back to that in a second. I, I put the shifter off. We'll do shifters and we'll do X30 senior at the end. Uh, oh, <laughs> Mark trailer says, how about Ramirez versus Lemke? That's well, that's go, later. go to Instagram. <laughs> I'll just say that. Go oh, to wow, Instagram. There you go. I like it. Okay. Um, Mike, I, guess, I didn't know Mark Taylor was an Instagram. Uh, Follower. I, he's, I guess he's all over. Maybe he's, he's, he's a, all over the gram. He's a social media he's butterfly. All over the gram. <laughs> Joe Rook Stewart is washed up. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Dems fighting words. I will say says, that Nathan says the thirty year old. Says the thirty year old. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I have to bring a bunch of bush lights just to make weight. <laughs> um, uh, Nathan Stewart pretty fast. Actually, he and Joe Rook we'll, battling we'll it out. G one and G two drivers scrapping. Uh, Micro Swift category again, uh, three different winners as well. Yes. Um, second place, uh, both races. The first two races for Jack Iliff, he ends up winning this this particular race, forty three thousandths of a second at the line. Top three drivers were locked and loaded. Uh, Asher Osteen was in there. Actually, there was a big group for the longest time. Caleb Tartar was up in the fight. I want to say it was eight carts. I think right. Let's- it was it a, was eight it at was one a point. Massive group. It was eight carts at one point. Was the lead group? Yes. Sarah Bradley was at the end of that. James Caleb Moss was in there. Yeah, Caleb Tartar kept working his way forward. I think he probably deserved a better fate than finishing in fifth because Tartar was unbelievably quick. But it came down to uh, Cameron Weinberg. Actually, is it Cameron yeah. Carson. Carson. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, uh, Carson Weinberg was actually the leader. Uh, the final lap and of course as you know guys in this particular layup we're not going to see this when we come back next weekend for the reverse national where it's the it's the right left right we're not going to get the big draft it's going to be the move into that corner then the over-unders um Carson Weinberg led coming out of the final corner uh Vivek Camden went to one side um <laughs> Christy don't do that to me <laughs> he's been screwing it up since I Wednesday. Will, I worked so hard though, and she knows it. She's listening, and she knows how hard I've been working. She has the most comments on our Mixler feed uh, than anyone, and it's telling you how to say to know to which, know which one? child. I is literally, on the I'm telling you this right now. Literally, when I'm calling the races, either race with the Weinbergs, and I literally look at the live timing every time I call their name, so I know I say it correctly. Now I couldn't quite see because the as you see here, this is kind of bent over, so I wasn't able to see Carson. I apologize. So <laughs> it's like his driving; he has a lot of excuses. I still beat you, David. I still beat you every time. Um, so Carson Weinberg uh, coming out of the corner, of course, spread out, run down to the line. I think we both thought it was going to be campaign. I, I thought he got he had such a good run. I'm like, this is a done deal. He's got it. I left went to the other side. I think did he not? I, I don't know the actual order they were in, but it was a three wide finish. And from our vantage point, again, we were too far away to really see it, but it just looked like he had that just enough head of steam to be able to get there. But two thousand thousands of a second, second separated yeah. uh, him and Iliff and Iliff getting the victory. Three different winners in the Microsoft category. Jack Iliff with the win, David Canton in second, Carson Weinberg in third. <laughs> no yes, first name. this is it. So here's, here's, the, here's what's happening in carding, ladies and gentlemen. Carlos Calder on a great idea. There's Cher, there is Beyonce, and now there's just Weinberg. Weinberg. That's it. I'm not even. I'm not trying first names. <laughs> it's just Weinberg. It'll be like, oh, great run, Jack Iliff, David Canton, Weinberg, Asher Osteen. That's how I'm doing it. That's it. It works. Where's Marianne? Where's Alicia? She's asleep on the couch right now. It's uh, it's been a rough day. <laughs> She's asleep on the couch, which, where we would both be if we possibly could. So, all right. So, bottom line is Jack Iliff, uh, the reigning champion. Um, you should see just the the relaxation, right? Because he's he's got that other year. He's just so patient, not pushing hard. Two for second place finishes and a win today. I'm looking forward to seeing that. You and I love this class because well, micro always the strategy is always there. The racecraft always is always there. They don't drive like crazies. 
And one key kind of element to today with that category is this is the third day of racing for them. I think with the younger categories, you see guys getting more and more comfortable as the weekend goes along. I agree with that. Yeah, I guarantee yeah. there's some guys who finish Sunday on a typical two round weekend. Man, I wish I had another day. One more day. Yeah, you're right. Everybody got that today, and I think the micro drivers really kind of took it took it took it to their advantage because we hadn't seen a big group like that in Friday or Saturday yeah, yeah, at, sure. the, at the front. Yeah, and and again. And tire management really isn't an issue in 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 micro swift because you know you could you could probably run those tires. That's right. That's wrong. right. But uh, but again, it, it's just you know everybody was comfortable. You know you get quicker and quicker as the weekend goes along. And I, and I was going to say, um, you looked at the fast laps. If you look from uh, from James Moss all the way up, so James Moss lays down a one twenty six five smoking lap, literally a half a second faster than everybody. But still, yep. 27 is down. But, yeah. yeah, but what I'm saying is, then you go 27 flat for Sarah Bradley, 27-1 for Tony Olo, 27-2, 27-2, 27-1, 27-1, 27-1, 27-1 flat. Go, go under that. I, I mean, know. even in still into 27. Yes. Yeah. You know, just that lead group is so even. Three to four match. tenths yeah. among the top 15 yeah. is a great field. I mean, look at our, you know, the X30 senior category. It's it's a similar type, sure. type of gap. All right, KA100 senior. Um, I don't know what to say about Bryson Morris. Like, you know, we talked about how well he did last year, David, but uh, it just, just seems like he's been a master all weekend long. It's like he, he goes to the front at will. It's home track, yeah. so he has a home track advantage. It's like playing on home ice, the, you know, when the like Leafs the play or, uh, <laughs> or you know, the wings at, at – Yeah, uh, yeah. What, what was that? Oh, my gosh. Joe Louis. Was it it, yeah, it's Joe, Joe Louis Arena, but we're yeah. not there anymore. Yeah. Our little Caesars, so uh, – <laughs> I know it's weird. But. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We're not able to gardens anymore. I don't even know what they call the Canadian, uh, the Toronto Hockey, hockey uh, Arena. The Boston anymore. Garden. The Gardens. The Garden. All right, so Bryson Morris, though, listen, let's be real. Like An unbelievable run for him again. He was just kind of playing around with guys moving forward. Um, you know, it, Brand, here's the, Brandon left you. I think he went to the lead way too early. He got super aggressive, was making the move forward, goes to the lead, and I'm like, I'm like Brandon, what are you doing? That's not something that Lemke would normally do. Sit on second and make something answer. I just like pushed too early. Well, and I in my notes I have this, and we talked about it um, after after the race was done. It was a sixteen round fight. Yeah, you call every lap a round. Yeah, nobody yeah. backing down. It was trying to win every lap, and and I think that's what we saw throughout the race because I think at one point we had eight, ten guys in the league at least lead pack sim somewhat and yeah everybody was gunning for for the number one spot or passing somebody it, it was just shuffle 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 throughout the 16 laps and yeah you 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 pointed that out that that Lemke may, might have made the move too soon but uh i you know maybe you just want to get out there and get away from it because you don't know what's going to happen i guess you i guess as, I, if you I guess you test the, the water video, you test the water right? if you look at the video when you're when you're sitting fifth or sixth you get in schmozzles <laughs> And and a little you know hand gestures here and there, and, and, it, and it, stuff happens. Flipping each other off out there, maybe potentially. Possibly, yeah. I I I don't know anything official. Instagram for just saying, right? check the gram. Check the gram. Check the gram. Check the gram. Uh, in the end, uh, Bryson Morris with the win, uh, just able to outrun Arias Duke Medji and Connor Ferris. Again, had a great run. I talked about uh, uh, the whole team at uh, Team Ferris were very strong. Connor ends up P three. Garrett Adams, I think, led at one point two. Uh, I think Gary I think everybody Garrett was up. I think, <laughs> I think everybody. everybody you're you're probably right. There. Uh, Alejandro Jaramillo was a driver who was kind of out of the out of the fight for a bit, but then the cross leg driver able to work his way back forward. Here's something here for you. Let's just let's let's drop this here right now. Andrew Bedozo says Magic is looking for a K100 driver to complete our domination. There you go. Just throwing that out there. Amory Lida. Agree. He was in the fight. Thirteen drivers within three seconds at the end. That is very true. He finished. Emery was right there. Three seconds. Two point six back. Uh, Emery had a really good run. Congratulations, dude. Well done. Up. Uh, um, I just had it there. Where was it? Yep. Up nine spots. That's solid. Nineteenth to tenth. Good run for sure. And, and again, again, this kind of competition, right? Because this class, as we know. 100cc racing is, is so much fun to watch. No one really can ever really get away. Uh, the draft is so big here. There were times where drivers could potentially pull. Um, but again, the big run out of 15 to the hairpin, the big run back, it literally, someone could, at one point, somebody had like a half a second lead, whew, right back in. And this is Twice. one class we didn't really get into tire manager. We, we didn't yeah. hear any anybody giving us any secrets or, uh, or tips on, on what happened. So, 
Emery, if you kind of have an idea of what yeah. you don't have to tell us what you did, but you can tell us what other people did that you saw. So Emery, you're there. Let's see some posts here. Uh, who said who saved? Did anybody save? Nobody went. Did, anybody, it did like, anybody go stickers? Did anybody, did nobody saved a set of stickers. I don't think in this class they did in the X30 seats. It literally class. saved stickers for the finale. So they ran one set. About. I know, but I was we stick, about. but was it stickers or did they run? Did they do qualifying on a set and hold that set? Because literally, it's five I was laps. Told stickers. You can scuff a set want, of tires. Do you want me to contact my source? Yeah, contact the source. I want to yeah. find out because literally, uh, literally, you could have scuffed a set of tires. Like, you know, how many five laps in qualifying? Scuff a set, put a heat cycle on them, and run them on in the main event on, on the final main event. I just, I think it's awesome. Here you go, Garrett Randolph says Garrett Adams. Day one was fast. No doubt about that. Garrett was, he was, he, both he and Logan were very, very quick, which I thought he was, was fast awesome. all weekend. There you go. Emery Lida. Luca was on brand new tires in final three. Yeah. But, you know. Yeah, but fast lap of the race. He was. He I, ends up finishing. I think 14. he was among those drivers that were in the mix. Wow. Did he get a penalty? I think he might have got a penalty. No. Hold on. Let me. Again, there's so much racing that we're trying to keep track of right. everything. Emery also says that Garrett had two rights. What's that? You mean two fresh? He had two, two, two tires. Oh, two tires. hey, you know what? Track predominant, predominantly left lefts. Here you go. Hey, look at Emery dropping, dropping here. Bryson, so Mockaby, and yeah. Cicero all had new ones in final two. So Mar Mars finished third. He had to have a penalty that we can't. This I find interesting. Gary, uh, Emery, are you saying he had the two right side tires? Fresh, fresh right side tires? Because again, a, a track is predominantly right hand corners. I was told some of the right, left hand corners. Some of the micro drivers did only rears. That's really interesting. So, yeah, again, it was, you know, you get two sets. So, yeah, here you go. Some other drivers. Well, I, we already put that up there. The Bryson, Mockaby, and Cicero had new tires. I remember when, we, the, when the Scusa Pro Moto Tour started, which just shifted back in 99 to 2000, whatever it was, um, they were due to five-lap qualifying session, three heat races in the main, and you only got six tires. So Mar not, even, not even two sets, six tires. So Mars finished third on track. But received a five second five penalty, second penalty. for pushback bumper. Dropped him to 14. So, yeah, so the, the job, I was, yeah, okay. Right. So, yeah. it's hard to remember this, all this stuff yeah. when, we're, when we're wrapping things up. So, yeah, that's a tough one for Luca because he was really good. Solid, again, this is, we're talking about a rookie senior. This is great stuff. So, uh, they had the tire management, they just didn't have the, uh, the, the front end of it of yeah. the car. Yeah. <laughs> oh that's right. That's right. Look at getting a little aggressive. Or potentially, as we know, could have been a uh, little uh little break lock. So my them. source says from the X30 Junior, Jace Park was on sticker tires for the main event. Damn. So he actually went through. Ran one set for three days until the final today. Wow. So again, tire management it can take you a long way. Well, here's the thing. They and he again won the opening day, except for yeah. the penalty taking. Well, the on the way. fresher tires, then. But my no, thought, on the opening day, he won. What I'm saying is, so he would have, but he would have been on fresh. Like, yeah, he would have been on new, new tires. Everybody was in the same tires. Everybody was on the same day. tires the first so they, day. The second day was a full set of used tires. Second day, I want to say he was top ten. I really think. The day. I really think this is going to be crucial when it comes to winning a championship. What do you have to do? Like, how do you you know do you hold on to tires to be badass? on Sunday for Championship Sunday. Here's Emory again, guys. Yeah. Here's some more input. New tires worth about three-tenths of a second in the first session, but after uh, three sessions, it, it evened out. Yeah, that's what I would figure, too. But um, I like that. This is really interesting. I like it. It, may, it makes for some some oh, interesting um, it's concepts. Strategy. And strategy. Roll the dice. Hey, you know what? Um, we need to really – especially, what if you have four great finishes uh, – you had good three good finishes here this weekend. You come out of the gate with a great finish in uh, no drops yet in four. You roll the dice on used tires all day race five on Saturday to have fresh tires at the end on Saturday. I would right, of course. It gives you the opportunity to do that. Yeah, I like that. I mean, I would have done that. In, in you know, but again, depending on where you finish, kind of leads to what your tire selection is going to be. I agree. But if you have a solid first first round, yep. And your second round is solid. You don't have to use that those new That's tires it. on that second day. And, and, you can hold it, and you roll the dice on, like I said, on, on round five. You roll the dice because you've already got four great finishes, knowing you save a set of tires for. Yeah. I like it. You got you always. It's like poker. You always got to have a little something, something a little hidden something. away. <laughs> Phil Pignacero says, "What's up, boys?" I always had a piggy. That's awesome. Um, all right, let's go to Mini Swift right now. David, leading edge motorsports, the sponsor, Mini Swift. 
Um, this lead group was absolutely stellar. Parker DeLong, Caleb DeCaffero, John Antonino, uh, Mateus Arjuela actually in the fight. He wasn't there in the last first couple of days, but he was definitely right in the middle of the scrap. Uh, Max Garcia was in there as well. We'll talk more, of course, about what, what's going to happen I coming think forward. Every driver in that top five led at one point. <laughs> To be honest, yeah. throughout the main event. So here's another penalty here as well. I'm Sebastian Weldon because I think they finished mm -hmm. sixth and seventh on the racetrack. So let's take, yeah, there's got to be something with Weldon. 194 incident responsibility with 140 and T1. All right, so we got to get 10 second penalty because uh, of Weldon Shipman, Cooper Shipman. They were running oh, with Cooper right. Shipman, and all of a sudden, a lap later, their Shipman was gone. So uh, that uh, would that would uh, explain that. Before we jump into this, uh, Pignatero again saying for sure new tires for Jace Park. Uh, in the final, but here's the here's the kicker right here, and then it rains. Kate, uh, Chuck Cavera, it, it's listen, literally, folks. I, I know this every is, single day. Next I, I hope this doesn't happen. This is Newcastle for the next week. Rain, 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 rain. Let's hope that goes away. Although I'll tell you this right now, I, listen, I know that nobody likes racing. Nobody, it's not a lot of fun racing in the rain. But what I really dig. It's, let's just, let's see who's going to be fun in the ring. Who's good good in the ring? That's great for a national championship, I think. Right? It's like it, it's like throwing wrenches when you're playing dodgeball. Yeah, right? <laughs> you just got to go with it. But hold on, figure out who's going to be yeah. I, I'm staying. I I'm staying home. So yeah, we may not have the EKN uh, styled garage here if Heidi's going to stay home. Uh, and again, as, as Emery Lodge said, reverse. She national. could just sell everything out of the van like it's candy. <laughs> Free candy. Free candy. Anybody want some candy? Here's what <laughs> <laughs> Heidi, here's what you need to do. We need ecardinews.com rain jackets. Let's get some of them printed up Love real quick. That. Like, or umbrellas. We need an EK umbrella. Umbrella would be good. I think well, I would buy an umbrella. I'll go with a jacket first right. because I'm in the rain, you're not. <sighs> That's true. That's true. I'll be dry. I'll be super dry the entire time. I'll be warm. Yeah, I'll be warm. <laughs> Swelteringly hot. Uh, all right. <laughs> yeah, awesome. um, all right, let's just go to Min to Mini Swift. Uh, <laughs> creeping me out right now. Totally creeping me out. Um, again, in, in the end, back and forth, back and forth. Parker DeLong was up front. Uh, I think every, almost every, that's what I said. Everybody for far but, No, Kaferi did not leave. Okay, no, he, he held on. He held on to the so. back of the pack. He did. There's no way he was holding. He was literally fifth. Tayus led, entire. Garcia led, yep. Antonino led, yep. DeLong led. They, all four of those drivers. Yeah, all led. those guys led for sure. In the end, uh, Parker Long moved his way, made a move. I think to the inside of thirteen, right? He used, moved, made the move inside of thirteen. There's a lot. Of, there, there was a, a lot. Of, of, there was a lot of shuffling, as I said. We yeah. said all four of those drivers yeah. led. Yeah. Long was leading. White flag, defensive line, defensive line, defensive line. They get to the I seventy corner, and boom, <laughs> everybody <laughs> drives right by. Him. He literally got driven right by. Everybody, everybody was by. pushing each other yeah. aside from him. He was kind of like, hey. I'm over here. I'm over here. Somebody, yeah, but you're the point. Somebody pushed me. You're the point leader. To the back of the bus. And, and you talked about that. To the back of the bus. And you had talked about that during the race because you yeah. said Garcia was kind of helping DeLon out a little yeah. bit. And you're like, no, you got to go. Why would you do points. that? That's right. Don't get it. If you know you're going to be able to pass him on the last lap, it kind of helps. It's like, yeah. 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 Get away. So uh, Max Garcia with the win by 65 thousandths of a second. Mateus Orjuela, as I said, coming into the fight as well this particular day. Uh, P2, John Antonino again. Uh, P3, three, three podiums, podiums. Three podiums for John. Yeah, really impressive on the race factory machine. Um, I Caleb, think Garcia was three podiums. I think you're right. Yeah. 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 I don't think you want to look at all that. But Caleb Guerrero was able to hold on. He ends up P4. He goes by Parker DeLong as well. The Weldons were sixth and seventh, as I said, but a big penalty. Three, yeah. Mark, so Max and Antonino have three podiums. Three podiums. So man, that's uh, each with a win. Yep. And each with three podiums. So those uh, those guys have essentially probably put themselves in the championship lead, and then you got the long probably sitting there in third. Yep. And then it's kind of a mix of yeah, three everybody. different winners. Three different winners, right? Yeah. DeLong, so those three Antonino, are going to be Garcia. in the top three yeah. for sure. Yep. So, but you know, with three podiums, that certainly helps you. Compared to two, what to what DeLong has. Okay, uh -oh. here's this for you, Davis. Does DC or Scusa have uh, points already? Where? Already talking We're not that. doing it, Carlos. We're not. We David will do his deal at the end to make sure we know, kind of figure out who the championships uh, are on Sunday. That's up to Scusa to get their uh, get their points put together. So we'll uh, hopefully see some points midway through the week on that one. Otherwise, uh, yeah, this is good. this 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 mini swift category is going to be fantastic. What do you want? Braden Zervis? 
Skip them. Oh, I, I, I tried to go over to see if they were there because we talked to Braden uh, yesterday. A, a great run for him, able to go into the top 10, uh, worked his way forward. Uh, we had played a little bags with the guys, a little cornhole with uh, the Zervis family uh, last night. And uh, good to see Braden come in here. And, and I want to say, where did the end? Where was he in the pre final? Uh, I just looked, yeah, 12. 12. So, but so, he qualified top 10, yeah, because he didn't spin, and that was that's it. That's what we talked, that talked about. That's what we talked about, right? And uh, so he was qualified in the top 10, slipped a little bit in the pre final, but uh, you know, top 10 for top 10 in his you know, again, rookie, yeah, mini swift yeah, driver, which I thought so was fantastic. I think he was probably one of the top rookies, uh, Antonino. I yeah, well, I don't yeah. think I think he's a pro tour rookie, but I think he ran mini last year. Antonino, yeah, Antonino. Well, his dad's right on here right now. Let's uh, give us an update, guys. Is this uh, is this John's? Is he did he run mini last year? Is this his first year mini? mini last year? Here you go. We'll get so, an update there. And again, to be drivers like Ben Mir and, and yeah. Weldon and yeah. Con well, Conrad is another rookie. Yeah. So he he had a great drive. Yeah, uh, he, he was started last, didn't he? Twenty yeah, he twenty-two, up 22 spots. spots. Twenty-two 18, spots. So. Spencer Conrad up twenty-two positions. Ooh, that's a hard charger. He ended up finishing eight, so he started fortieth and <laughs> he finishes eighteenth. So Brinkman. Brinkman was actually. The oh, I meant, and I mentioned that. 30, 38 to 8. So 30 carts. 30 in carts. 16 laps. So that's two. Now, did we not? Did I not mention this last night that I, that I thought Brinkman was going to be a guy to watch up front? And, I think I'm pretty well, sure. Well, he obviously he was trouble until pre he had pre final trouble today. But right, shout out to Cameron Brinkman. So, yeah, true. All so, right. Second year. Second year for John Anthony. But I think it's his first pro tour okay. event. I don't, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't remember him on the pro tour last year. So, yeah, he's a good shoot. Like I said, I had first had a chance to, uh, to interview John after he won at um, in the micro class at the Streets of Lancaster Grand Prix. That was a fun interview. Um, fantastic. Emery Lott is saying, yeah, 38 to 8 for Brinkman. It's kind of like me at the Brickyard where I went 60th to 34th. Really fantastic, Dave. Good for you. I do not wreck. You might have been able to beat me there, but you didn't, which is awesome. Uh, let's go to KA1. <laughs> let's go to KA100 Junior. Um, I, I tell you, uh, you look at some of the, the, the best juniors in the country right now, and you've got to put John Burke, Carson Morgan, Brent Cruz, all in that group. Mateo Rubio, Luengo. Yeah. But, like, the top three guys, they, they finished. Those, those guys, um, and Mateo's a fantastic driver. Aiden, obviously, new to the pro new to the pro tour. I don't know if Aiden ran last year in the pro tour. No. This yeah. pro, pro tour. Two poles. Two, two pole positions in the weekend. I think he was pole twice, right? Yeah, and uh, coming off Route 66 victories, I think, Victories or podiums, one or the other. Um, North Carolina driver, so obviously has, you know, been comfortable racing with Cruz, racing with Weston Workman, all those. Another Weinberg, guy. Another guy. Just Weinberg. Show. Just Weinberg. Just Weinberg. Just Weinberg. Yeah. Um, you know, so getting getting used to that. Um, so you know, Levy's been been impressive over the last month. You know, with with. Uh, Racing you route USPKS mm -hmm. and and now here so I'll give a shout out to Western Workman as well. He ends up finishing P six, but Western was a, was a was a badass out there working strong. Well, hey, here's, hold on, quick, quick. He who's this he guy? Came from the back, Jim Zilich. He's in Europe, probably watching. So what? Sense. What? Well, I don't know if he's he's in Europe. I know Connor's Connor, over Connor, there. Connor Connor Flipper is over there. I don't know the Jim's in there. Otherwise, it'd be four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Um, but um. <clears throat> Oh, it was the pre-final that Workman came up. Yeah. So he, I think he got bounced in tech for qualifying, put him at the back, so drove up to ninth in the pre-final, was able to kind of get close to the top five, just not enough. So John Burke getting the race win, it just seemed to me that throughout the entire, um, the entire weekend, it seemed like John probably more com more confident than I think I've ever seen. He just, just was – he he had he put down the laps because in the end it was kind of him or Carson Morgan yeah. at the end. Yeah. Um, they kind of broke away from the rest of the field. But well, remember Carson was right with him the whole time. Was but Burke laid down those last couple of laps Great. to be able to pull out to a lead. I mean, yeah. one second advantage. Yeah. Probably I think he pulled it in the last two laps. So essentially. Yeah, yeah. Half a second each lap, and it was and it, it was out, out of fifteen. Really rolling the speed out of fifteen. Scoreboard, scoreboard on, and right? I seventy was where he yeah. was pulling a lot. I think I think Morgan would kind of close up a little bit in in the uh, the super mile section, and uh, and but Burke was able to pull away in, in kind of the tighter stuff. So maybe maybe a difference in gearing between the two, but Burke was uh, you know he that, put it, he put it put it down when he needed to. And that's two wins for Burke, right? Two wins for Burke. Um, 
Carson came over at the, at the end of the day because he actually didn't hear that we were doing the podium. I think he, and he was because I think we did them first, and so he's running up afterwards to get it. And he goes, "Man, you know, I'm second again." I'm like, "Don't Carson, don't worry, keep digging." We we've, we've watched Carson be uh, one of the top kids coming up through the ranks, and he's got a couple of yeah, good years. So first one round one, yeah, and then uh, in round three, so there two wins, two wins for John Burke. Confidence and momentum. Can't talk about it enough. Confidence and momentum. I think he's going to be really strong. Again, all but the thing is, all bets are off because reverse national. I would love to see it in the dry, but I have a sneaking feeling we may end up with wet. And uh, but I, I still, I'm still a big fan of the wet. I like it. I like it. All right, Dave, let's go. Um, <laughs> let's go. Let's go. With Shifter. I was leaving it alone. Super easy. Uh, we'll just blast through the, the G1 and G2. Uh, Nobody four, cares about four drivers. Guys. Four drivers in G1. Uh, Joe Rook ends up getting the race win. Uh, Scott Barnes had some trouble early, right? What? Uh, yeah, had um, something in the carburetor in the prefun. In the prefun. Got, got the whole shot on on, on Joe. Yeah, but uh, something in the car, the butterfly, I think, it didn't finish, or, right? Yeah, it didn't yeah. broke or yeah. something. So um, wasn't able to uh, to finish. Thus, had to come through a little bit of the of the master drivers, just uh, but didn't have the pace to uh, to keep up with Joe during the main event. Joe. Could have had a hat trick had he ate a couple burgers and drank a couple bush, bush lights. lights. Uh, yeah, came up light in one of the races in the first race, actually. Sketchy right. Barnes ended up getting the race win there. <clears throat> had a bunch of tacos on Saturday night, so he was good to go. Uh, Anthony Stiffler coming home in third. Uh, G2, got to give it up for Nathan Stewart, man. To be honest, uh, this guy is a badass. Um, you look at lap times, he was really – his fast lap would have been second quickest in G1, too. We're talking 45 years and older versus 30 years of age and older. And really, at one point, uh, throughout the weekend, 15-pound pound difference from G1 and G2. Because of the KZ yeah. versus – Oh, S that's right. Because the 175. Because Rook's on a KZ. That's, that's right. And to be honest, Nathan was battling it out with Joe. Uh, so G1 and G2 winners kind of fighting it out. It's fun to watch. I, I totally agree. Yeah. And they were – and not only that – I they mean, had the S two guys in there. And I talked to the back. <laughs> I talked to Nathan, and he's and and he's like, "Well, listen, they, they start at the same time. We're talking to the guys. Like, can't we start separate? Because by the time they get going, they're already into the end of the Pro two. They're they're, they're battling Pro two drivers. They're battling some of the Pro shifter drivers as mm -hmm. well in there fighting with those guys. I think they would like to have maybe a fifteen or twenty second gap. Scusa starting them all at once, rolling. They give a little gap of a couple of couple of, of rows, right?" Okay, so I think they should split it. But I personally, I they would like to split it so it'd be a clean race. I personally like seeing them battle it out with the senior drivers. I know that's not what they want, but man, it's good to see them battle it out with the pro and pro twos. You're here to race the people that you're supposed to race that's with. That's true. Yep. You know, it's not like KA juniors racing KA senior. Yep. It'd be it's the same type of scenario. True. Shout out to Joe Rook saying respect to Nathan, though he's a beast, no doubt about it. Uh Phil Pignatero, can you say magic? Uh, We're not yeah, here yet. Yeah, I can say magic. It's a word, Phil. So of course we can. Uh, all right, uh, let's go to Pro Two. Um, this is the. Uh, I didn't see it. You said that Jordan Musser. I, don't, I talked to Jordan. Wild ride. I didn't zone. see it. Okay. Because it happened on the opening lap uh, again. He had issues in the pre-final. Had to avoid hitting uh, a driver. Jumped over the ski jump and just went straight off. Okay. Yep. And then kind of bent some things mm -hmm. and. And so he didn't fit start uh, finish the pre-final. So he started in the back of the Pro 2, Pro 1 group and was making his way around a guy at the scoreboard corner, gave him a little bit of room on the uh, on the dragon teeth there on the mm -hmm. rumble strips. And the guy just literally came over to the right and took his left rear out, sent him sideways at 60 miles an hour as they started pulling out and said he just did a couple hops, hops, hops. It could have been and, uh, could have yeah, yeah. Was, was expecting to go over and luckily didn't, but uh, ended his race right there. In the end, it was a pretty good battle up front. Uh, we had a good fight for second spot. Uh, Josh Pearson, uh, just 14 years of age, last year, X30 junior uh, number three, right? National number three, his first ever Pro Tour win. Uh, he gets it in this, in this weekend here in the Pro Two category of Rawls and Performance Group. He was literally punching above the weight class because I want to say – did he finish ahead of Race Liberante? I think he was ahead. Of, he was ahead. I think he was ahead of Liberante on the racetrack. Look for total time. He was fifth overall. Fifth overall in pro in pro two. An amazing run for Josh and uh, super fast. Again, probably had the fifth fastest lap yeah. in the race. Yeah, a thirteen flat. Uh, so really impressive there. Baylor Griffin and, and it, the fight was awesome with Baylor cool. Griffin and Anthony Freeze. Griffin's again another DNF in the pre-final because yeah. he and uh, Salas got together. 
That's right. In the prefinal. Yeah. So they started in the back. So Griffin had to work his way forward mm -hmm. throughout the race, thus allowing Pearson to kind of cruise control. The opening lap, opening lap, Andy Rule was actually was leading. Was leading. Yes, yeah. Yes, yeah. At one point. Yeah. But, uh, I thought she, I thought she was going to pass. Uh, she might pass Race Liberante there. That would have been fun to watch. It would have been. She was putting the pressure on. But it's hard to go these the, the whole lap, 16 laps, tough on this particular racetrack. Baylor Griffin does end up getting into second spot. Anthony Freese uh, was third. Gavin Bailiff uh, was right there as well. He was fighting with Freese at one point, but fell back about a, a couple seconds late in the run. Uh, otherwise, that's pro two. Josh Pearson, congrats. Big, uh, big race win for him. Uh, yeah, we'll get to the magic now because uh, Magic Cart USA, what a what a uh, what a, a weekend. All three drivers getting a race win. Pedoza wins race one. Vandersteer wins race two. AJ Myers wins race three. Doesn't drive seven hours home. He's still probably driving home right now to get home for uh, to go to work in the in the morning. Um, Rory Vandersteer though, fast lap of the race. So th that bonus points there. I think Rory might be the point leader coming out of the weekend. Yeah, AJ had the issue with Formal yep. in one of the main events. Sixth um, place, I think, or something like Bedozo that. Pedozo had his issue today yep. with a broken um, shifter lever. Yeah, the um, mount, the top so, mount. So, right? you, yeah. you know, a 10th place finish for him. So I think Rory's kind of kept things clean. Formal still finished that race, yeah. though. So um, a couple podiums for him. Um, Jake French had the issue. So if he wouldn't have had the issue today, he might be yeah. been able to be up towards the top of the point. Jake had an so, issue with the actual um the, I mean the actual spline out of the engine for the gearbox. Uh, I mean, even snapback. Wick Wick had issues in one of the mains. Liberante was a DNF yesterday. Yeah, so I mean all, attrition is a major factor in the uh, in the pro shifter and pro shifter two categories. Here's the, here's Bedozo giving a little Andy Rule of love here, right? Andy Rule showing the, the men girls can handle a shifter. I get it. I, I get you I, I talk about it, and I've said this before, and we'll talk about it a little bit in senior category. I look back at the 20 years I've been doing this, and I think of the five girls probably five girls that have really, really, really impressed me over the years. Um, obviously, Hannah Greenmeyer being one of them, Asher O'Hara the other, Sabre Cook, of course, and a shifter card as well. you got to go back to Danica in the, in, the, in the late 90s. She won a lot of races in the WK Manufacturers Cup. When you're talking about shifter racing, probably the best girl I've ever seen in a shifter cart was Juliana Chiovini. That She could handle it. She hustled that car around in the, in the S2. She never went to the S1 class, S2, and then kind of moved to, to try to go to cars. But uh, Andy Rule doing a great job. And, uh, and and she had a good punch. Yes, she did. <laughs> Fantastic <laughs> right hook. Um, Andy's going to I'm gets sure done. everybody's – no, no. I'm sure everybody's telling Andy this. She's got, she's got to work out. The bottom line is she's got to get herself dialed in. She's got to get strong because these are tough carts to drive for sure. Um, yeah, look at Mark Trailer, Thomas Buckley. They all know what Juliana Chiovini. She was an absolute badass. Uh, won a lot of races. Her dad, of course, was the Borel importer uh, in uh, in Canada for many, many years. And uh, Juliana was a top driver on the on the Pro Tour. A win. I think she. I want to say she won at the streets of in Barrie in the Barry Grand Prix. I think she scored the S two win. So Nobody knows Canadian street races. Everybody knows the Barry Grand Prix if you've been around. I think she won. A, I if think you've been around. I think she might have won at Marshalltown as well. I think. In, in that in, in the S two class. Oh, so, in the Pro Tour. Yeah. Well, Carlos Calderon is the, the the Dutch Intrepid driver. Yeah, but she's not American. That's Bitsky Visser. Yeah. She was uh, Visser's unbelievably fast as well. She was strong. It's like saying Catherine Leg, right? I don't I don't remember remember Catherine doing it in, in the carding that she but did. I'm just saying Catherine she's Leg, not yeah. she's not yeah. U.S. I'm talking about uh, uh, North American drivers for sure. Yeah, Bitsky Visser, as I yeah. said, who is now I. Uh, Run, she was running in the W Series as well. But anyways, she is. You know, obviously, Saber Cook uh, was a race winner as well. Uh, tremendous driver in the S2 class as well. Uh, all right, so there you go. A.J. Myers with the win. Rory Vandersher second. Danny Formal third. Formal really working hard. He was surrounded by magic cards there at the start in third uh, for Bedozo, before Bedozo had his issue. Uh, nonetheless, though, A.J. Myers getting the race win. For Rory Vandersher, though, fast driver on the track. I think that's really good. It's going to be really good. This next, the next three rounds are going to be, especially insane. if it's in the rain. And Formal is all about it. Formal wants it. Formal would he come would out there. The he would come out with a hose and soak the track to be able to race. If it rains, do you think that Josh Lane shows up? Wall well, thing is not, sure. <laughs> but he's so good in the rain, man. He's fun to watch in the he, rain. He's he's a he's a rainmeister, but. Um, I don't know what he's doing actually. I don't know why he's not. He's probably working. Probably working. So yeah. that would have that would explain. He, ro it. he rolled into Brickyard this without, Friday without practice yeah. and beat beat people. Yeah. 
Uh, let's wrap things up here right now with the X30 senior class. Um, you know what? Anytime you have a senior class like this, we, we, we've got so many of the drivers that we've watched come up through the junior category, David, who are you know moving themselves up and running top 10, right? Um, opening couple of laps are a little bit aggressive. We had a big wreck at the very start in turn one. Uh, Thomas Navo coming from, I believe, uh, like moved to the big right, to the right. Uh, actually, I believe he got a penalty for the move. It ends up catching out Duke Medjian. Duke Medjian gets up in the air, comes down, I think, on top of Braden Eves. So Eves was out in the opening lap. Duke Medjian. Uh, and and Jars of Crack, who's behind both of them. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So it was just, it was kind of a cluster with a K mm -hmm. uh, in the opening corner, which it shouldn't be an X30 senior, but it happened to be and allowed a few drivers to kind of break away from the field because everybody was in, in a little mix up there. So in the end, it turned out to be a three driver breakaway. Ryan Norberg finds his way to the front. The first time he's actually been at the front of the pack throughout this entire weekend. Again, Ryan Norberg, as we know, right? I think it was the first time he led all weekend. All weekend. Was That's what I'm saying. All, yeah, all weekend in the final. Four time consecutive Supercar USA national champion trying to go five championships. Very consistent. It looked to me like he was almost lining up for a win, but leading in that last lap, I'm like, what are you doing, dude? You, you know better than that. I just think he figured he, he was going to be able to make it happen. He led his teammate behind him, Bryson Morris. They were, at the very end, pulling a little bit from, from Luca Mars. There were times where there was like four, five, six cart lengths, but then Luke would use the draft to get back up. And yeah. I thought that they had enough. When they came out of 15 out of the scoreboard corner in the final circuit, I was sure that they were had enough. It was going to be RPG, sideways, you know, two by two across the line, but a good run through the hairpin I-70 for Luca, and he got the full draft of both those guys. Morris ends up getting the win, and, and Luca pushed him past Norberg. Uh, the gap between Mars and Norberg was 68 thousandths of a second, so Ryan goes from Morris to Norberg, so three drivers within 68 thousandths. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, actually, no, so only nine thousandths of a second between Mars and Norberg. Yeah, it was a, it, yeah. that was a close finish, but but Morris certainly had the uh, the advantage at the line and scored his fourth victory on the weekend. So uh, two in X30 yeah. senior. He had two wins today, KA senior, yeah. X30 senior. So uh, two wins in each category. How's it, how good is it to see Ashley Rahara up here again? We've, we Over the years, we've had a lot of fun watching Ashley uh, do what she did, win races that she did. Obviously one of the finest female racers we've ever had in the sport. Uh, but she comes back with her dad working out of the pickup truck, Jim wrenching on the card again, and she ends up P4. Her and uh, Philip R. Scott were locked and loaded. She yeah. finally was able to get by R. Uh, by R. Scott. Um, almost had a chance to win the pre final. No, that was it. I, I thought know. that was yesterday. I know. How much had a chance to win a, a yes, pre final? A pre final. Yesterday. A pre final. I, and I asked her, I said, does that make up for yesterday, you know, <laughs> finishing fourth? She's like, and she, she pulled in one lap early. She smiled about it. She so, pulled in know, one lap early. And I think that's the thing, you know, they're having fun. They're having, shooting. They always did. It seemed like they always did. I just well, love but when you're at that level, I mean, you look at guys like Norberg, Jars of Crack, like, yeah, they're kind of having fun, but they, they it's serious. You know, when you yeah. talk to them right after a race. Just, <laughs> that's right. That's true. Needless to say, uh, Ashley was super quick. She was able to get by Arscott in the final lap. They were they were running uh, fourth and fifth, trying to reel in that lead group. The lead group was working together too nicely. Uh, Ashley ends up finishing fourth. Philip Arscott uh, on the WPK, the Will Power Car, in fifth. Uh, Hannah Greenmeyer, uh, strong all day long. She ends up finishing in the sixth position. It, yeah, she didn't get by. She, she moved her way up into sixth. Tresini in seventh. Ports in eighth. Tyner ninth. And Cole Morgan rounding out the top ten. Uh, good penalty, as we said for for Thomas Naveau. Otherwise, uh, all in all, uh, Bryson Morris really flexing the muscles. I think. Yeah, probably he's going to be leading both championships yeah. going into into next. And week. he's a rookie senior, right? Rookie senior, what? but again, that home home field advantage. I, I, you know, everybody, you know, it it might not be a lot of, a big deal at other tracks, but I think here you just kind of understand the way the track changes because we know that the Newcastle Motorsports Park, it changes as the day goes on and, and having that little bit of advantage kind of helps. And and again, confidence. Yeah. You, you watch him on the racetrack. He's not making bad moves. He's making confident moves. I would totally agree with that. And with, uh, with, I almost want to say the confidence and there's this level of patience and like just he's just relaxed he's just he's not even he, i don't think i saw I, think was, I don't think i saw him force a pass 
he was happy to let Norbert leave. I would in those laughs yeah. because he's like, sure, I'll wait. <laughs> you're good. So I, I, hear, I, I hear you're good. But that's what's going to change next week, as you talk about. We're going to have rain, so that's going to change things. And just the, the way the track's laid out, it's none of this. I'm going to sit back and draft by somebody at the start finish line. No, it's going to start getting gonna have to pass yeah. somebody for yes. the win. So All we're right, not again, like uh, again, we're not doing the full super mile. We're doing reverse national, so it is right, left, right, coming back to start finish. Yeah, I know you like that. just okay. Yeah. Think about it. When we used to come here, when the track first opened up. Yes. And the original start finish and we, line was around the it corner. It was a draft to the last corner, yep. and you still had to get through. And there were so many of those over unders, unders. Oh, totally. guys going off in the grass yep. to try. I mean, the, and you know, yep. I know you weren't here for a robo pong, but guys yep. just Billy Lewis going through the fence where everybody on the grid there to to get through the the, the finish line to finish first. It was just you know that's that's what we want to see. We want to see. Crazy finishes. Okay, here's two questions. Let's wrap it up with this, and I totally, totally agree. Phil Pignatero says, uh, these tires didn't change the track much this year. Very interesting. And that's something we talked to a lot of drivers about uh, when we were kind of wrapping th uh, things up through the day. And Mark Trailer, perfect question to follow it up. Is the track rubbering in now with new tires? Really, David? No. Not People are telling us no. Not that everybody is used to when you are talking about MG slash Ivinko yeah. tires. Yeah. Not there's not that rubber buildup that you're gonna get um, when you go out and do your track walk. It's like we talked dry slick. It's, <laughs> it's like, glossed over. Yeah, it, it, it's glossed over. It's yeah. it all the tires are marbling. You know, it's kind of like a dust. Mm -hmm. Like they're, they're it's it's wild. It's like a pixie dust. And so everybody right. talking about how how super stiff the uh, sidewalls are. And they're just trying to get a feel. For, they're just really trying to get a feel for it. It's just it's not something they've ever expected before. They've ever had before with it with the uh, Vinco tires slash MG tires. Yeah, it's something that uh, everybody has to get used to. It's a brand new tire. Yeah. Nobody has. Not every. I'm gonna get that spider right there. It's just hanging there. <laughs> uh, not a, every. Nobody has tons of time on these tires, so it's yeah. it's a learning experience. It's different from cold weather to warm weather, and and, and the different tracks that you go to. Done. Uh, anybody got any other yes, questions? You're not, yeah. you're not walking out of your shoes. Perfect. No. Yeah. You're not walking out of your shoes. And we've no, seen that I, before. There's no I'm grip. walking across yeah. the racetrack and there's like a little bit of a grip, but not much. Yeah. And that really, think about it. everybody who's been here before. You come into Newcastle with, here's my, here's my, here are my notes. Here's what we've done before, right? This is what we've done. And uh, we're going to do this. The track's going to be like this after the first day. Here's what we're going to do. We got to loosen this thing up. We got to free it up a little bit because I'm bound up. That's it's a totally it's a totally different approach to one of the X thirty drivers yep. that was running up front said we just threw the kitchen sink at it today on the final just to see uh, what it would do so uh, again you know guys are, are still learning what as exact, exactly what the track is going to do and then and then everything they learned this weekend out the window put some rain tires on let's see who's good in the rain but it's Indiana you, think? you never know. <laughs> because you know, yeah, hold on, hold on. Hold on. We were at the speedway last well, last weekend, yep. and it did yep. rain but barely, yeah. And they got hammered with a bunch of rain down here, in that's New true. Jersey. So, you never quite here's, 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 here's the 80 percent chance of rain on Saturday, was it not? When we were at when we were at Indy, yeah, you're right, and it, and did. it didn't rain yeah. until the end of that's the day. True. Now, here's the one thing, and so because I know the mechanics, they're gonna want it to just do something either rain, or, either rain or don't rain. Back and forth, changing this, changing that. Oh my God, it's not, it's drying up. We got We want to watch it, but they don't want to. Yeah, do it. I, I'd love to see it go back and I forth like that, that, but I feel so bad for those guys when they are thrashing like that. My God, back and forth. It's tough. Uh, all right, folks, if you have any other questions right now, um, we will uh, we'd be happy to answer them based on what we think we know or what we don't know. We can find out for you later on. Otherwise, um, we're still going to. We've obviously done these nightly debriefs, so we're not going to do a regular debrief podcast. What I'd like to do potentially on Tuesday is get a couple of winners to talk, get, get them on the show. Uh, David's, of course, going to be working his tail off throughout the next couple of days. It could be just me. It could be David and I. But we're going to get a couple of winners for kind of a debrief uh, interview instead of just, just doing a full debrief. Um, so if you have any questions, we can, we can bring those up there as well. If you have any questions right now, throw them up. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed this this show. We are uh, ready to wrap up. It is ten thirty. Yeah, almost gone an hour. I know. I know. Fifty six minutes. Man, lots to talk about. Um, but again, pro tour in ten days, <laughs> right? 
It's like Cole's notes, jamming everything together. Uh, winter Nats, nope. Spring Nats, nope. All the summer Nats, summer, six races. Summer Fest. S the Summer Festival of Speed, or Summer Fest, as you call yeah. it. I call it Summer Fest. You think you're a trendsetter. That's the problem, right? You think you're like a I'm hashtag trying. guy. I'm trying you're to not, hashtag it. Do you think you're an influencer, Dave? No. I don't think you're an influencer. I know I'm not. <laughs> I try to be through the world. Oh, hold on. I, this, this works for me. Oh, yeah. Cocktails at my camper tomorrow. That works for me for sure. Or oh, tomorrow. No, I'm gonna be, be working here all day tomorrow. Dave's driving home tomorrow. Um, Rob Ocasio, favorite race of the weekend from both Rob and Dave. What was your favorite race? <sighs> Man, it's a lot of good races. A lot of good races. I I I really like the senior race today. Because I, I just I didn't know how it was going to happen to see Norberg finally get up front and knowing what Norberg can do right it's like okay what's uh, what's what's Ryan how's Ryan going to handle this can Bryson find a way by still and he did like he That's still good. was right yeah, it was good he was still able to make the move which I thought was good I, look, the micro impressed me today because there was almost eight guys That's up true. front yeah um, but it's hard to think about what happened Saturday and Friday because we've already kind of washed that away. Um, so for today, I would say the micro race because I enjoy seeing, and they race clean. Yep. You know, race good. They're, they're not flipping each other's signals like we see in <laughs> other categories. Here's one but, for you. But yeah. again, the K100, it was a boxing match. I love K100. You know, that was yeah. great. You know, we yeah. love yeah. 100cc racing in here in the United States. Here's a question we probably shouldn't touch, but we will anyway. Sounded like there were some complaints about the new officiating. Is that smoothing out? I would say this right now. It's a brand new officiating crew. Uh, to a certain extent, John Maskey was here last year uh, with Neil Strickland and everybody else. They brought Bo Barfield in, and Bo Barfield is the race director for uh, IMSA as well. I've known uh, Bo for 20 years probably. He was the USF 2000 race director at one well, point. Back in the day. So, yeah, he was the USF 2000 race director at one point too. So this guy's been around a lot, and Bo Barfield was a driver himself. He raced USF 2000 uh, himself. This guy was a, so he's, he's a racer who's, who's, who's done this, and everybody's going to have to get a feel. Um, John's done – Obviously, some karting, but Bo hasn't done karting, so that's something he's going to learn. He's going to learn the racecraft here as well. There was a couple of calls that we thought were maybe were a little bit questionable, but they're going to figure that out for sure. Uh, it seemed like it smoothed out a little bit at the end. I, I will give the listen. I will give this. That was a good pass. Grace and Eves, the father, the doo -doo father. We got to get to the father filter right now. Uh, oh, my son's so good. He's uh, awesome. <laughs> best pass on the outside was Braden Eves. That was a badass pass. It was the cold trickle move. It was around the outside of Luca Mars, right? Am I right? Yeah. Around the outside of Luca Mars. That was pretty good. So, Grayson, yes, that was a solid pass around the outside. Uh, all for not because he ended up getting a pushback bumper, but all the way because Luca went to the inside, all the way around the outside on the cushion of Kokomo. Uh, excellent pass for Braden Eves there for sure. Yeah, there's no cushion in Newcastle, is there? There is no cushion right there right now. Uh, let me remind you that I got the first-hand look at the Ramirez versus Lumpkin thing. Check out the gram. Yeah, check out the gram, folks. All right, listen, we're done. Um, it is a, a 10.30. 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Thank you so much, folks. It's going to be a one-hour show. Five, four, David Cole, go, Rob Howard. You're going to miss it. No, I'm going to go pass it. Oh. Thanks, guys. I appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, look for our, our debrief interview on Tuesday, likely with a couple of the race winners. But thank you so much, guys. We do appreciate it. Book it.